Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending on where you have joined from. Thank you so much for joining uh, today's webinar. Today's content is about SQL Server Query Optimizer Internals. Before we begin, let's answer a few housekeeping questions that keep coming all the time. First one about the webinar recordings. So yes, all our webinars are recorded. They are available on sqlmaestros.com. I posted the link in the chat window and let me do that once more. The, not this one. So let me just copy it from the website, from the other monitor. And there you go. So this is the place where you will have access to all our recorded webinars. Now, you should be aware that some of our webinars are free and some webinars are very nominally priced. That helps us to continue our free show. If you want access to everything, you can take a premium membership, which is an annual membership. You can also become a free member. By the virtue of becoming a free member, you can access free content. If you take a premium membership, you will be able to access all our webinars, including the paid ones, and you will get access to our premium video library. All that is explained on sqlmaestros.com. And in case something is confusing and you're not able to understand what's going on, do drop an email at uh, to uh, contact contact at sqlmaestros.com. I repeat, any questions, contact at sqlmaestros.com. Okay, and of course, the resources are also available on the website. So let's get started with today's content. Welcome, everyone. You know, I, I do that sometimes. So maybe today, let's do this. Uh, by the way, uh, Eid Mubarak to uh, all of you, at least to the those folks who celebrate this uh, great festival, uh, this wonderful festival. So yes, uh, happy Eid to everyone. And uh, which country are you joining in from today? Uh, let's put that down in the chat window. Let's just see the diverse uh, participation we have today. So I'm just looking at the chat window. Okay, UK, Costa Rica, India, Germany, USA, Nepal, Bangladesh, Hungary. <clears throat> wow. That is amazing. Okay, Canada and Croatia. Wow, we have great participation from so many countries. Well, glad that you are there. South Africa, great. Thank you. Okay, so wonderful, wonderful, wonderful from, uh, okay, someone is asking, where are you from? Okay, I'm based in India and I keep traveling between uh, Bangalore and Calcutta. And just to let you know that I do a lot of SQL Server stuff, consulting, training, and, you know, all these video courses and master classes. Probably you have attended some of my content before. Maybe you've watched in YouTube video or you have been passed off. You have been part of uh, uh, previous webinars or you might have seen some, you know, part of my master classes, etc. This is something that I've been doing for last many years. I started working with SQL servers from 1997 onwards. So yeah, long time. And apart from doing a lot of SQL server work, I spend a lot of time uh, on the sports, tennis. I, uh, I teach tennis to my children. And yeah, we are very passionate about the sport. And I keep following the sport as well. So that is where I spend most of my time as well. I mean, just shuffling between SQL server and tennis, so to say. Yeah, and in previous life, of course, I was an MVP and Microsoft RD and whatnot, a lot of community work. But yeah, those uh, are the old days, so to say. Okay, friends, enough of uh, this chit chat. Let's get started with today's content. So what are we doing today? We are talking about SQL Server Query Optimizer Internals, things that are kind of lesser known. Some of these things might be very useful to you when you are tuning queries. Um, other things might just be informative in nature. They might be like, okay, this is how this is computed. This is, this is how this uh, number comes up. This is the math behind the number, et cetera, et cetera. So that might be a lot of uh, information and uh, may not be very actionable at times, but then other parts of this uh, content will be very actionable. So this is what we are going to do today. You know, when I was deciding on the content that I want to cover in today's uh, webinar, I there were so many things which I can call as lesser known things about the query optimizer. There are just too many things. So I thought, let's like distribute it in part one, part two, part three. I keep doing that in our webinars because, you know, like a 50, 60 minute uh, duration is not enough to cover everything. And it doesn't make sense to just, like just pump up everything into one webinar and rush through the content. So. Uh, in today's webinar, I am focusing on the 
uh, cost factor of the execution plan, you know, the, how is the query optimizer computing that CPU cost, IO cost uh, for each operator and the overall execution plan cost, the query cost as we call it, and, and something about the memory also, because of course, given these three holy resources, you have the CPU, the IO memory. And I was like, oh, this is a perfect combination for today's content where I can show you a lot of different things about how is the query optimizer computing these costs. So uh, that is what the content is about today. So if you have uh, no further questions, and I hope you don't have, let's begin with today's content and today's demos. First things first, okay, what I'm what I'm doing, I'm just going to take you uh, a run through. I'm going to talk about the estimated operator IO cost. Number two, I'm going to talk about estimated operator CPU cost. Then I'm going to talk about, uh, okay, is this being repeated here? Uh, okay, CPU cost. And then I'm going to talk about the overall estimated operator cost after IO and CPU. Then I'm going to talk about the total query cost. And I put some gap here because I'm going to ask you some questions. And then I'm also going to discuss something about memory. So when you have this optimizer, how is it asking for memory, the extra memory grant, et cetera. So these are things that I, I feel are not very popularly known. Uh, people uh, really struggle to find out where are these numbers coming from. Okay, so the background to the, all of this is, when you look at the execution plan, you're really looking at the query optimizer output. Query optimizer is like a black box. There's a lot of algorithms, a lot of mathematics that is going inside. And uh, it's not very well documented uh, for all the reasons that Microsoft knows better. Uh, but yes, some of the things are documented. Some of the things have been talked about by experts in the community, even Microsoft experts. They talk about that in uh, in forums and in conferences. And of course, uh, at, at times when I used to privately talk to them as an MVP, I learned a lot of things about the query optimizer. So, uh, but the execution plan that you see is really the output of the query optimizer. And if you try to dig deep into the execution plan, you will probably be able to uh, identify, compute a lot of things as to how the optimizer is working. So one of the things in the execution plan that you will see, and I'm assuming that many of you have seen the execution plan, is a lot of numbers keep flying in the execution plan. You take the uh, cursor over each iterator, you're going to see a lot of numbers there. Estimated CPU cost, IO cost, estimated number of rows, estimated number of executions and whatnot. Uh, the operator percentage cost, the subtree cost, the, you know, so many things. Where are all those numbers coming from? That's really what is happening inside the optimizer. The arithmetic behind that. So I thought in today's webinar content, I am going to discuss uh, some of those. So let's start. First, we are going to talk about the operator IO cost. Let's change the database context to AdventureWorks 2016. I'm going to turn on the actual execution plan. And I fire a very simple select statement here, which is select star from person dot person. Let's do this. Execute. And once this execution is done, let's jump over to the execution plan. And what you will see in the execution plan here is a clustered index scan. Very, very straightforward. All you're doing is asking SQL Server to give you all the data from person dot person. There is a clustered index on this table person and the index is being scanned, right? Relatively, uh, very, very straightforward stuff. Now let's take the cursor over clustered index scan. And this is what I was talking about. So many numbers out here. One of the things that you are seeing here is estimated IO cost. Let's look at this estimated IO cost. And you can see the number here is 2.84757. So first things, first question, where is this number coming from? How is this computed? 2.84757. 2 That's the number. Now, first things, this is just a number. There is no unit of measurement here. So it's just an arbitrary number, uh, no unit of measures, uh, measurement. So when you do not have an UOM, you're just comparing it with, you know, that becomes relative. Like if it's two, then whatever it is, it is. But the moment you compare two with 200, then you know, okay, two is low and 200 is high. This is what I mean, right? Uh, in, in other words, when, when you have a unit of measurement like kilometers, right? So, or miles, 
So if you're one mile, you know, okay, one kilometer, one mile is not that big. Okay. It's, it's a short distance to travel. But if you have like 1000 miles, 1000 kilometers, you know, it's a long distance to travel. That is what I really mean by that. There's no unit of measurement here. These are just numbers. Okay. So what you see here was, this was the number 2.8. 4757. So where is this coming from? This is the formula. When you see an IO cost, IO in SQL Server is all about reading data from the disk. And on the disk, the data is stored in pages. So if you know about SQL Server storage architecture, the table data that you see, what you see here, this data is stored in data pages. Each data page is eight kilobytes in size, eight KB. And when SQL Server is issuing out an IO request to read the data from the disk, it's reading the complete eight K page in chunk. It is not reading just one or two rows. It reads the entire data page. So let's assume that if the data page has hundred rows, but you have not asked for all the hundred rows, you probably just want the first few rows from that page, it doesn't matter. The entire page has to be read from disk into memory. So the cost is one page read. That's the cost. Now, if so, to compute the IO cost, this IO cost that we are talking about 2.84757, we have to first identify how many pages do we have. So uh, for this table person dot person, because we are doing a clustered index scan here, which means this is the clustered data, the, 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 the data pages, which means the clustered index is the data. So we have to find out how many data pages we have. We can find this out from a D, uh, DMV, sys DMDB partition stats. Just supply in the name person dot person. And because this is a clustered index, we put index IDs equal to one. Let's go and execute this. And you can see that the table has 19,972 rows. And the number of pages we have is 3841. So this cost that you see in the execution plan is the cost of reading 3841 pages. Now, let's dive a little deeper into the arithmetic here. To read 3841 pages, this is the hard-coded numbers for the optimizer. To read the first page, I repeat, to read the first data page, the cost is 0 0.03125. This is, this is a magical number. I mean, how it is derived and what was the history and background behind this? I don't know. Maybe many people don't know. But this is a hard-coded number that this is the cost to read the first data page. And this is the cost. Again, no unit of measurement to these numbers. This is the cost to read all the additional pages beyond the first page, which means out of 3841, the first page that SQL Server Optimizer is reading is this is the cost. And for the remaining 3840, 3840 pages, this is the cost. So the mathematics turns out to be very straightforward, which is let's add this one to the multiplication of this with 3840. That is what it is. So let's go and execute this and we get a number 2.8475 and then we round this off to this one, right? This is how the um, IO cost is this. This is how the IO cost uh, is derived in the execution plan that you see uh, in the uh, on the operator. All right, friends, did you like that? Lesser known things about the optimizer. Okay, honestly, in the chat window, how many of you, for how many of you, this is something new? Yes, uh, just put yes or yeah, new. For how many of you, this was something new and you had never known about this? Okay, at least I will get some confidence that yes, this is a lesser known thing. If all of you know about all of this, I was I would be like, oh, wow, what am I doing? Okay, great. Knew some of it. That is that is cool. That is good to know. Okay, great. Yes, good feedback. Good feedback. Uh, motivational feedback. Okay, so let's move forward. Likewise, if there is um, this IO cost, there must be some mathematics about the CPU cost. So let's do that. Let's move forward. 
Um, uh, yeah, of course, in this script, I give you another example of sales order header just for you to be sure. Yeah, is this the formula? So you could just try this around with another uh, uh, table. And I, I do that. So you can download the script and try this. I do this with sales order header. You get this as a cost. We find out the number of pages. We do this mathematics and it, it works. But you know, friends, I cannot really guarantee you that this will work with all the small tables, all the large tables. A few things might change. I've just not like kind of tested it across anything and everything. Okay. Let's do the next one. Estimated operator CPU cost. So just because there's an IO cost, there's also a CPU cost. We should look at that as well. So we have this table select start from sales order header. Let's do this. Again, we get some output. Let's jump over to the exit. Okay, number of rows, 31,465. That is something that you can see in the status bar there. All good. Let's jump over to the execution plan. Uh, very simple execution plan, select, compute scalar, compute scalar. And here you again have a clustered index scan. Let's take the cursor over this. And you will see estimated CPU cost. 0 0.0347685. Now, how is this computed, right? Mathematics behind this one. Now that you understand what are what's the logic going on, I'll do this a little uh, very quickly. So we have the num number of rows 31465. The magical number for the query optimizer, the hard-coded number to read one row. This is the CPU cost. The CPU cost to read one row is this which is 0 0.0001581. This is the magical number to read one row. CPU cost, not IO cost. IO cost is something that we have covered. Remember, IO cost is per data page. CPU cost is for each row. CPU cost is not on page basis. It is on row basis. And the IO cost is on the data page basis. So this is the cost to read one row. And this is the cost to read all the additional rows beyond that first row, which is double zero, triple zero, one, one. Again, number of rows is three, one, four, six, five. So the mathematics is let's add this one and the multiplication of this one. Do we get our number? What was our number, by the way, friends? We should note this down. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just missed our CPU cost. 0 0.0347685. 347685. Okay, let's go and execute this. And do we get this number? 0.0347685. There you go. This is how the estimated CPU cost coming up. Okay, wonderful stuff. And again, I tested this with person.person. Dot person, and yes, it works as well. But then, yeah, no guarantees that it's going to work for large tables also. Things might change. With each release of SQL Server, a lot of changes are done to the optimizer. Some things are documented, some things are not documented. So yeah, what you see in one version of SQL Server, there are no guarantees that everything is just going to be exactly the same in the next version of SQL Server. Okay. So we have seen how estimated IO cost is derived and how estimated CPU cost is derived. Let's move forward and let's look at the estimated operator cost. Now, Estimated operator cost. Can you guess this, friends? How will the estimated operator cost be computed? Well, okay, what do I mean by the operator cost? Let's take select star from person dot person. Let's go and execute this. Jump over to the execution plan. And we have clustered index scan. So you have seen how is this IO cost being derived? You know this now. How is the CPU cost computed? You know this now. How is the operator cost computed, estimated operator cost. Any guesses? Let's see. 2.8697. There you go. Spot on. Bullseye. Some of you are getting it absolutely right. I don't really need to demo this, right? <laughs> So you add up the IO cost, which is this, and the CPU cost, you get the estimated operator cost. As simple as that, really. So all of you getting this right. Okay, great. How do you get the estimated operator cost? So you have the CPU cost and you have the IO cost. Just add up both of them and you get the estimated 
operator cost 2.8697 uh, for the one that we did which is this one okay we're dealing with person dot person okay wonderful friends question number so we did question number um okay we did the operator cost 2.8 this is the one 2.8697 right so we we took the cpu cost and we took the io cost we added up that great answer friends where do you see the total query cost let's see what answers we are getting by the way just to let all of you know i'm looking at the total number of participants and for today's webinar we have crossed over 200 participants 200 people have joined today's webinar which is very motivating thank you so much and i hope you all are enjoying the content and the demo okay my next question is where do you see the query cost let's go and run this i'm going to run this okay let's jump over to the execution plan where do you see the query cost anyone how do you know what's the cost of this query Any ideas? Okay, someone is saying we see hundred percent. Uh, yeah. Okay, cost hundred percent. That's going to be hundred percent cost for any query that you run. It's always going to be hundred, isn't it? You take anything that you want to run. You run this. Jump over to the execution plan. Hundred. Hundred percent is a relative cost factor here, right? We're talking about the cost of the query. Okay. Let's, okay, so I can see that some of you are kind of lost there. How do you get the cost of the query? Okay, tricky stuff. No, not really very tricky. Let's scroll down and I, I purposely put blank here because I wanted to ask. If you run two queries, then the percentage, etc. will be different. I'm going to answer that. So don't get, don't be fooled by what you see here. This is the cost relative to the batch. It's not the query cost really. So let's answer this. I'm going to use North Wind 2 for the demo here. Let's take this query, okay? And let's put this up here. Now, this is a query and this is also a batch. This is important for you to know. So when I run this query here, and jump over to the execution plan, you will see the query cost here relative to the batch is 100%. What is important here to know that this is the only query in the batch. So this will be 100% all the time. But if I put this up query a second time, something like this, for example, now we have two queries separated let's say we have two queries in the batch here so if i'm going to execute both of them now and jump over to the execution plan you will see that now we have the query cost relative to the batch which is 50 percent 50 percent right now this is the cost in terms of how the query is related to the batch from a cost perspective, which means the cost of the query for the batch. But the question here is, what is the actual cost of the query? Something similar to what you see earlier, which is the CPU cost and IO cost. So there must be some number and the operator cost. So there must be some number for the query itself. This is what I mean by the query cost. And also 50%, 50% is what you saw. So let's let's do this, uh, uh, a very simple thing. So I'm going to change this to AdventureWorks 2016. So what we were talking about, select star uh, from, let's say, sales dot sales order header. And let's do select star from sales dot sales order detail. Let's go and execute this and jump over to the, oops, I did not turn on the actual execution plan. Let's do that now and here. Now, again, you have two select statements, two queries in a batch. If you jump over to the execution plan, you will see the cost of the query relative to the batch. So you can see the first one sales order header does not have enough rows, uh, not too many rows, like 30,000 rows. This is turning out to be 34% cost to the entire batch. And this one eats sub 66% uh, uh, relative cost for the entire batch, right? So it's not 
I mean, if you take two identical queries, of course, it's going to be 50%, 50% what you saw earlier. So this is the relative cost of the query to the batch. But I was talking about the cost of the query, that number that we are looking for. Okay, so let's find that out. Let's go and run this now. We are going to run this. Jump over to the execution plan. Here is the execution plan. Now, what you know, friends, all of you know about all of this. You know about the IO cost, the operator cost, the CPU cost. You know this now. Great. Where is the cost of the query, the overall cost? Take the cursor over the select operator and you will see something here called estimated subtree cost. Right? Estimated subtree cost. This is the cost of the query. Now, the cost of this query is 0 0.0181471. Now, this is a very simple query, a simple select statement on a very small table with just one or two predicates, etc. Now, going by the experience all of you might you have in SQL Server, and I know that this is a, a query with a very cheap cost. I mean, this is really nothing. It's peanuts. Uh, uh, the query is not expensive at all because I have seen huge numbers when it comes to the subtree cost. So this is the cost of the query. I know you might have a question as to why is it called as estimated subtree cost. See, by the way, friends, everything is estimation, right? It's not really actual because these are just approximate computations. So why is the term? Why is this term like estimated subtree cost? Because this execution plan is like a tree structure, right? So you have from select, you have all these different iterators that are connected to each other and they branch out. So when you talk about subtree here from the select operator, you're talking about the entire tree from that point, right? So you're talking about a subtree. Select happens to be the first node in the tree. Select happens to be the first node in the tree. So the subtree cost on the select operator is going to be the cost of the entire tree. In other words, the entire query. Something like subtree cost is going to be there at each node. So you have these nodes. So if I take the cursor over here, you can see that this also has something called as estimated subtree cost. So I, I took this uh, over concat operator, right? Concatenation operator. So this also has subtree cost, which means from concatenation, from this operator, what's the cost of all the nodes going uh, forward on the right side, okay? But really from a query tuning perspective, getting down to these finer details is not very actionable. It's not very useful. But friends, what is useful and what is actionable and what you should be recording as part of your baseline and benchmarking is definitely the cost of the query, which is the estimated subtree cost on the select operator. That's the cost of the query. All right. Now, the next question is, how is this computed? If you want to watch the remainder part of the webinar and all the remaining demos, you can subscribe to the webinar on sqlmaestros.com and get lifetime access to the recorded webinar. All you have to do is just go to sqlmaestros.com, click on the recorded webinar section and get access to all the webinar recordings. There are many of them. Some of these webinars are free and some of them are very nominally priced. So the ones that you're interested in, you can subscribe to them and get lifetime access. Now, because there are so many webinars, subscribing to each webinar might be a bit cumbersome. So we have another option, which is SQL Maestro's membership. So the first link on SQL Maestro says join. If you click on that, it will bring you to SQL Maestro's membership. Things are very simple. There are two membership levels. The first level is free, where you get access to all the free webinars and all our tutorials and demos, more than 200, 300 demos and tutorials. All you have to do is just become a free member. You're paying nothing and you get access to all of them. So you don't have to go and subscribe to each webinar individually. Just become a free member and then explore the free video lobby. So if you go to the video lobby here, there is something called as free content where you get access to all of that. 
but then all of us are interested in advanced content isn't it and that is where premium membership comes into play so the webinars that are paid and there are many advanced tutorials and demos if you want access to all of them you can become a premium member and pay a nominal price which is annual membership once you do that you can explore the premium video lobby if you go to the premium video lobby from here or just go to the video lobby and click on premium content you can see all the paid webinars and all the advanced tutorials and demos and access get access to all of them uh, with your annual membership Anyway, choice is yours. There's a lot of content on sequelmaestros.com and you can also explore the YouTube membership level as well. So you, you have free content on YouTube channel and you can also join and become a member of Sequel Maestros on YouTube where you can pay a monthly fee, get access to all the paid webinars and advanced content. So in summary, you can go to sequelmaestros.com and become a member or you can become a member on YouTube also. Becoming a member on sequelmaestros.com turns out to be a little cost effective with the annual membership in comparison to YouTube monthly membership. But anyway, choice is yours, whichever platform you wish to use. Happy sequel. Thank you.